Hey there, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, good to see you. I sorry a minute or two late. Had a little problem with my uh, and there it went out. Came back in. So hopefully we don't have any further issues. Um, so uh, every uh, night, what I'm going to do is try to wear a, a different T-shirt. One of the things you may not know about me is I have a wide variety of different T-shirts that I've collected over the years. And uh, so I got more comments about the uh, Zelda uh, uh, T-shirt that I had last night. Uh, so that was pretty funny. But uh, anyhow, I um, uh, wanted to do a, a, our devotion tonight. And uh, I'm going to be in Nehemiah. Uh, chapter number four, and uh, wanted to talk to you tonight about uh, hope for the best and and uh, prepare for the worst. And really, we see that with Nehemiah, uh, particularly in chapter four, uh, when um, you know just a little bit of background that Nehemiah has come back and he's he's going to build the walls. And uh, what we find is coming in chapter 4, uh, there's some resistance um, to what he's doing. And, and so we, we find here that really what he was trying to do was a quality endeavor. I mean, he was really trying to uh, do something that was, you know, good. He's trying to build the walls. That was going to uh, uh, help the people and protect them. And, and really, you know, as we think about us in our lives, we're trying to do some good things. I mean, uh, people are, are trying to provide uh, for their families. They're trying to, uh, uh, you know, raise kids right. They're trying to um, do well in school. People are trying to do a variety of different good things. They're trying to work hard. They're trying to, uh, uh, you know, be a positive contribution to society. Even our, even our church, think about us, where we're trying to do right. We're trying to reach our community with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, we have a quality endeavor. Nehemiah had a quality Endeavor. He was doing good. But just because you're doing something good doesn't mean everybody's going to be supportive of it. doesn't mean everybody's going to be happy about it. And, of course, we see in Nehemiah uh, chapter number 4 that there were some key people that were very unhappy about what he was doing. I'm pick up, I want to read to you in verse 7. It says, But it came to pass that when Sambalat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites uh, heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped up, they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. All right. And so we see here that just because you're doing something good doesn't mean there won't be powers that oppose themselves. And, you know, as we think about uh, what we're dealing with in our nation right now that's affecting all of us, uh, really, this virus, and we could say that even Satan is the uh, enemy here, and, uh, uh, you know, they're there. And one of the interesting things is these enemies were there, but they never actually attacked, okay? And so what we see is that they were preparing themselves for an enemy that they did not at that moment see. So it was there, but they could not see it. And, and we draw that parallel as we have, you know, this virus affecting people. We have uh, uh, Satan out there. There's an enemy that we cannot see. Uh, but we know that the potential for them to affect us is very real. And because of that, uh, we have to prepare ourselves and so uh, the reality is you don't know when it's going to attack. You don't know where it's going to attack. And and so these people here in the day of Nehemiah, they were preparing for an enemy that could come from anywhere at any time, and they never knew exactly when or how. And that's very frustrating. That's very nerve-wracking when you know the potential of something negative is real, but you have no warning for it, and you don't know what direction it's going to come from. And so you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to provide for your family. You're trying to uh, uh, build a church for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're trying to advance in your career, but you're facing an adversity uh, of a of a enemy that is hard to quantify. It doesn't have a face. You, you don't know where he's coming from. You don't when he's coming. You don't know if he's going to affect you or if it's going to affect your neighbor. And so there's there's powers that oppose us. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, well, what do we do? Let's look at verse nine, Nehemiah four, and look at verse number nine. It says, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God, 
and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Okay, so we're, this is the first, there's several things we're going to get into, but the first thing you do is you pray unto God. Look, there's, there's only so much you can do, all right? You, you pray to God uh, and and ask him to intervene. And and as we're going to go through this, you, you prepare yourself, all right? But ultimately, you're praying to God, God, just, you know, let this go away. God, let this not affect us. Let this not be a problem. Uh, but as you can see, they're prepared. But the first thing we need to do is go to the Lord. That's why as you're dealing with this crisis, one of the first things that should be done is you go to God in prayer. That is why Lifeline Baptist Church, in response to the changes within our states, has prioritized prayer every day, five, uh, I'm sorry, 9 a.m., and 5 p.m., I want you praying. Set the alarm on your phone, all right? Now, I give Bill Henderson a pass because he doesn't know how to set the alarm on his phone, okay? And uh, I saw him today, and we kept our distance, so I'm not going to show him. Betty Ann, you know, maybe you can teach him, but maybe that will just cause some marital strife, and so it's not worth it. But, but you know, look, and if you're old enough that you don't know how to set the timer on your phone, you get a pass. Uh, find some other way. But for the rest of us, you know, uh, set the alarm on your phone. If you're working, that's fine. Just take a minute of your time and just go quiet someplace quietly as soon as you can and have a brief time of prayer. If you're sitting at home doing nothing, you can have a longer time of prayer. Bring your we we sorry, it broke up there again. My apologies. But uh we need to go to the Lord in prayer. We need to seek him. That's the first thing you do is go to God in prayer. All right? Not, look, if you're just isolating yourself in your home hoping you won't get sick, that ain't good enough. Go to God. But secondly, we see here in verse 9 that uh, uh, it says here, and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Well, they were watching. So this is where our conduct kind of comes in place is you watch what you do. All right? You watch what you do. You know, you go out, you come, you, know, you go somewhere, you, you wash your hands, you're keeping your social distance, you're, uh, you know, disinfecting, you're doing a lot of good things, you're setting a watch, you're watching what you do, there's nothing wrong with that, that's why you're taking precautions, you're taking precautions in your life, you're taking precautions in your family, you're taking precautions uh, in church, we've made a lot of precautions and we're adjusting with things as they come, and so, you you know, you, you make precautions, but we also see that you got to accept some realities, look at verse 16 drop down here and it came to pass from that time forth that half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both spears and shields and bows and habergens and the rulers behind all the house of judah uh, they which builded the wall and they that bear the burdens with those that laid everyone with one of his hands wrought in the work and with the other hand held a weapon what were they doing? They were trying to build the wall, but they couldn't put their 100% effort into it. The situation just wouldn't allow them to. They had to be considerate of the enemy at hand, and they had to make adjustments that were not prototypical for a building program. They had to do the work with half of the resources because half of the other resources were required to stand guard, to watch for the enemy, to, to hold weapons. And, you know, the reality is, is right now, we're trying to do all the work with half the power. I mean, think about this. If you've been laid off, you got your unemployment check hopefully coming to you soon. Well, that's half your pay. You still have all your bills. That's the reality. And right now, that reality has not set in because the bills haven't come due and you don't know what uh, stimuluses may come or, or what uh, aid may be. I, look, you hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. The reality is, is that these things may come. They might not. I don't know. But I'm preparing for them not to come. And how do you do that? And, and you know, look, it... it it's a reality, and the longer this thing goes, the t 
tougher it gets. And, you know, you think it from a church perspective. Man, it's tough when your uh, church is, is, is fractured, not for any bad reason in the sense of there being problems, but the reality is is that, that disjointed. I mean, man, we're going to have 10 people in services, all right? So that's 10 people that can come out to church on uh, Sunday at 9 and then another service at 11 and another service at 6. So that's uh, uh, 30 people that can be in church. Well, our membership's 130 people. All right, that's the reality. Now, poor to me thought about preaching more, but given the current state of things, I felt that that was about as much as I wanted to do because I want people to be able to be home and be safe, but simultaneously to have a quality online product that we can make available to people uh, at home. And uh, most people are online. There's a few that are not. We're prioritizing them in our services. If they don't have internet access then we're and they want to come, then we're prioritizing them. We're trying just to, to honor the Lord in the decisions that are made. And, you know, we're going to have special music and uh, congregational singing. We're doing some different things. We'll talk about that uh, more in the coming days. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, but still we're divided. Some of you families have been home for eight days, nine days, whatever it is, and, and haven't got to see many people. And how much longer will it go? I don't know. You know, you, but we're, we're trying to win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. But the reality is, is that it's very tough right now because uh, you can't meet with people. So you go online and, and that's what you, that's the best you can do. And, and you know, we, we continue on here. In verse 21 says, So we labored in the work. Half of them held spears from the rising of morning till the stars appeared. Look, you do what you can and you work hard while you're doing it. So whatever it is you're doing, work hard at it. Don't be and don't be lazy and just uh, work hard and, and, and do the best that you can with what you have. And you have to prepare yourself. Now the interesting thing here is that... The enemy never actually attacked them. He never came. He could have, but he never did. You know, Nehemiah prayed and hoped that he would not, but then he prepared himself for the reality that they might. But that never happened. Thankfully not. You know, the reality is, is that you and I don't know what will happen tomorrow. Now, we ought to live by faith, and we ought not to worry about tomorrow, but you know, we ought to prepare ourselves for any reality that may come. There's a fine balance there. You know, we ought to prepare ourselves for what tomorrow may bring. You ought to prepare yourself for what uh, uh, may come. I'll give you this example. Now, we are under, uh, you know, a 10-person limit for uh, two weeks. I hope that it will not be longer. I'm prepared for it to be. So I hope that it won't be, but I'm prepared for it to be. From the church perspective, from the operation, from a financial perspective, and every facet that I can fathom, in my heart, i am already got it planned in my mind, this thing is going to go longer than you or I want it to. It's not my call to make. It's not my decision. It's not your decision. So you need to, in your heart, prepare yourself for this might go on longer than you like. And so you better make sure that you have some sort of sustainable system in place. All right? Something that works for you and your family. I mean, if you're day eight in and you're ready to kill somebody... You might find a way to maybe get out. That's why we're making the church available. I know it's a small thing, but you want to go pray at the church, it's open for you. Now, it's not literally unlocked, but what I mean is you tell me you're going, either I'll go unlock it or Nick will unlock it. And if you want to pray with somebody, we'll find somebody else who wants to pray with you. You want to pray by yourself, you pray by yourself. Look, we want the church to be a safe place that you can go to have a time of prayer, to get away from things. You know, sometimes a whole families are in the house for a while right now. 
And, and, you know, it might be nice, husbands, to give your wife a little break from the kids. I mean, particularly if your kids are normally in a, a public school or a Christian school and you're not used to teaching. And we're going to do a whole lesson soon on on homeschooling your kids when you're not used to homeschooling, but that's not for tonight. But maybe it just might be good to say, hey, honey, head on out for a little bit. And, you know, she's paranoid about crowds or whatever. And so he's tell her to go over to the church or same thing with husbands. All right. Go, go pray for a little bit. You're going to need it. You got to prepare yourself for the long haul, not just, oh, one more week to go. Yeah, it might be one more week to go. I hope it's one more week, to go. but it might be more than that. And for those of you that chose to quarantine yourself sooner and now you're under a two-week thing, that's three weeks, it can get kind of tough after a while. And so you might want to prepare yourself for that. I'm hoping this thing ends soon. I hope there's not a lot of loss of life, but that's not my decision to make. And so we find here in Nehemiah that eventually they did finish the wall and uh, they did it in really good time. Uh, they could have done it quicker, but there were circumstances that just didn't allow that. And so in your life today, I want to encourage you, be gracious with yourself, be gracious with others, because there's factors at play that just kind of, they dictate a few things that maybe uh, uh, other normal circumstances, it would happen. I mean, like right now, I'll say this and then I'm going to wrap it up. You know what I'm not doing at church right now? I am not taking attendance. Why? Well, it's not going to be reflective of where we're at because of various things, all right? And uh, uh, I am keeping track of the offering, though, so don't forget to give online, all right? But uh, anyhow, Lord bless you. So good to see you tonight and uh, or have you come on. Um, people hopping off and on, and that's fine. But I hope this is a blessing, and uh, uh, we'll close in prayer. And I'll be back tomorrow night about the same time. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day, Lord. Thank you for everybody that's been able to come out and uh, listen online or will listen later on or tomorrow. Father, I pray that you would just bless everyone and uh, give them a good night. Let them be safe. And we'll be back at it tomorrow evening around this time. Lord, Lord bless everybody. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a good night. Bye.